Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 30 December 2020. A rare Wednesday night knife sale. It is 9 o'clock Wednesday evening, the night before New Year's Eve, and we are having a knife sale on a Wednesday. I didn't want didn't want you guys to you know get liquored up and start spending money you didn't have on New Year's Eve. <clears throat> so this is my public service this New Year's season. We have 31 items for your consideration this evening. 29 of them knives, two of them watches out of my personal collection. Before we get into the meat of the sale, a little bit of housekeeping. Let's see. If you are new to this weekly sales event, you're going to want to be familiar with and agreeable to the terms of the sale, which I will post on the screen for you forthwith. They will also be reprinted in the description underneath this video. Also in the description above the terms, you're going to find three links to prior videos on the Apostle Pete YouTube channel. The first one will be to my Primer for Buyers video. That's a 38-minute expanded explanation of the terms of the sale. So if you're new, you might want to watch that. The second link is to my FAQs for Consigners video. That is an explanation to those of you who might wish to consign knives on this weekly sales event explaining how that process works from the consigner's perspective. The third link, as always, will be to my rates and services video for the Apostle P. Knife Service, the original precision sharpening service for the online knife community. So you'll have those three links. Then you'll have the terms of the sale. Then at the very bottom of the description, you will find the list of tonight's inventory, complete with timestamps and pricing, Number to the left of the slash will be your as-is price. Number to the right, your as-sharpened price. If you see no number to the right, that knife already has my edge on it and does not require any additional sharpening. <clears throat> or it's a watch, which can't be sharpened. <laughs> if you see the word sold in lieu of pricing, that means that item has been purchased, bought, paid for. It is on its way to its new owner. No need to send an I'll take it on that one. Let's see. There will be no next day sharpening this week. The holiday season is a busy one and I have other work that's kind of stacking up. So no next day sharpening this week. So all my acknowledgement emails will reflect that. I think it's about time to get the terms up on the screen and then we'll be right back with the inventory. Here are the terms. All right, let's get to it, shall we? We have miles to go before we sleep. Thank goodness there are no leftovers from last week because we got a big sale. Thank you, by the way, for buying it all last week. You did leave me with one belt buckle and two belts, but those are being donated to a friend of mine who probably could use some help keeping his pants up. So they will not reappear this week. So first up, this is pretty cool, boys. This zippered pouch has a leather patch, which indicates it's daddy, Daryl Ralph. Uh -huh. Now, this is a Daryl Ralph Designs knife, not an HTM knife. <clears throat> not sure what that means, but it's a Daryl Ralph designed version of his old CUDA Max. This is called the Daryl Ralph DDR mad max assisted opening coffin handled flipper oh my take a look at that guys that appears to be a dlc or pvd coated 
Fo dagger blade, meaning the top edge is not sharp, but oh, is it close. <laughs> Beautiful fuller running down that mid spine of that blade with some drilled holes. Blade length on this one in S35VN is 4 inches. The handle is 4 and 11 sixteenths. It is a titanium frame lock <clears throat> with a carbon fiber scale on the show side. Rock solid lockup. Centering is right down the middle. It's kind of hard to pick that up, but it is dead. And that assisted opening action is super snappy. Pretty cool blade, I think. Um, and this one is is engraved number zero one. I'm not sure what that means. Condition on this one is absolutely like new in the pouch. It was very hard to find an old listing for these. They're not currently being made. Uh, so I'm calling it discontinued and out of stock. But I think I found one similar that was listed on a website at $399. This one can be yours. Kind of a piece of history. $225. $225 for the titanium frame lock, assisted opening, 4-inch bladed, Daryl Ralph DDR Mad Max, like new in the pouch. $245 if you'd like it with an Apostle P. Edge. She's a beauty, boys. Next up, from the Annals of ZT History, this one's going to come in the ZT zipper pouch with the golden fleece lining. This is an old Strider <clears throat> designed, I'm not, I'm sorry, Onion Design ZT. Hard anodized black aluminum handle. It's going to be a liner lock, track tech inserts. Look at that thing. Speed safe opening Nightmare Tonto in S30V. This is the ZT0400. Thick stainless steel locking leaf. Centering appears to be right down the middle. Speed safe action is perfect. Rock solid lockup. They called this the ZT0400 Scavenger. S30V blade 3 and 9 16 inches long, 5 and a quarter handle. It ought to be really good in the hand, Mr. Onion. Thank you very much. Nice. <clears throat> it is absolutely like new in pouch. <clears throat> Discontinued out of stock knife. When they were available, they ran 140 at your favorite web retailer. Can't buy one new though. How about for this one? A doggone near perfect example. 110 bucks like new in the pouch. 135 with an Apostle P Edge. That is the ZT0400 Scavenger. Next up, no box with this one, thank goodness. It'll cost less to ship. From Lon Humphrey Custom Knives. Does that look like a Bark River sheath? Maybe like you'd put a gunny sidekick in? Yes, it does, but it's stamped Lon Humphrey Knives. Uh -huh. Let's see, why the Bark River influence? Well, perhaps because this is a Lon Humphrey Rustic Bravo. So this is a Bark River Bravo 1 in dimension, right? Four and three eighths inch blade, uh, four and thirteen sixteenths inch handle. This one in beautiful Macassar ebony. But this is done in Lon's Brute de Forge style. So you're going to have the raw forged flats on the blade, the polished spine. And then this one happens to be wearing an edge from some guy in Northeast Indiana known as uh, the Apostle P Knife Service. Uh-huh. Blade steel's 1095. I'm gonna call this near mint no box. I'd call it like new, but it's got that way better than Lon's edge. I'm sorry, buddy, Lon, but uh yeah, you don't get them that sharp. <clears throat> what a beauty. Uh comparably equipped with gorgeous premium wood handle. This knife would have run about 260 web pricing. This one, though, can be yours 
for $190, one niner zero, no need to sharpen. That's the Lot Humphrey Rustic Bravo TAP. Next up, <clears throat> I'm not a huge Boker Plus fan, but this is a cool knife, guys. Comes in its original box. The Yeah, who knows what model that is. Come on, Boker. That's a ridiculous model number. Anyway, <clears throat> what it is is this. It's the Boker Plus Quiken Tuxedo with carbon fiber scales and copper bolsters. The frame and the blade beautifully, whoops, black wash finished. VG10 is your blade steel. Three and a half inches is your blade length. Four and a half is the length of the handle. Right hand tip up clip. Ooh, that backspacer's copper too. IKBS bearing system. <clears throat> Liner lock, rock solid lock up, beautiful centering, beautiful flipping action. This might be my favorite Burnley Quaken, Quaken, <clears throat> Boker Plus has ever done. How about that custom lanyard? Looks really nice, doesn't it? Yep, this one is like new in the box. Perfect action centering lock up. Uh, they're out of stock new. When they were in stock at your favorite web retailer, you would have paid $149 for this. Uh, Arizona Custom Knives had a consignment recently that they sold for $175. But that was a lot of money. How about for this one? A buck and a quarter, guys. $125, like it is. $145 if you'd like it to come to you with an Apostle P Edge. That's in your inventory. is Boker Plus Quaken Tuxedo CF Copper. Next up, it's time to be invaded by arachnids. We got a nice little run of spideys for you. The first one comes in my favorite box in the world. And this one just says paramilitary too, but in the model number it'll give you some hints. Mm -hmm. Well, there's the clip that is not installed. That's the original unmolested polished spidey clip because this knife is wearing a deep carry titanium clip with a little bronze anode. This knife wearing those beautiful burnt orange G10 scales is a paramilitary two in CPM Rex 45 and it's wearing an Apostle P edge. And it is, I, I hate to say razor sharp, it's the Apostle P sharp. It's very nice. Rock solid lockup. Ooh, free swing in action. And perfect centering. <clears throat> so, you get the burnt orange Rex 45 pair of two. You get the deep carry titanium clip. You get the custom lanyard. You get my edge. What are these things doing in the used market, you might ask? Well, I looked at some sold listings on eBay, and they ranged between 230 and 285. This one, I believe, probably nicer than any of the ones I saw sold on eBay. The mechanics are perfect. You got the upgraded clip and the original clip, and you got 25 bucks worth of sharpening work, which you really ought to have on Rex 45. Your price for this one, 275, my friends, 275. This one's in your inventory as Spider Co. Pair 2 OR Rex 45 TAP. Next up, it's another one from Spyderco, another paramilitary two. This is going to be a DLC coded S35 version with the brown G10. Now I didn't know this, but the black coded S35 VN, look at that, the clip has never been moved. How new is that? But the black coded S35 VN is a sportsman's supply dealer exclusive. I believe the Satin S35 is regular production now, but those are even out of stock. Check it out. Never been kissed, my friends. Pretty nice factory edge, too. Rock solid lockup. Nice free action.
blade centering on this one. Let's see, what did I say? Perfect. Uh -huh. So like new in the box, <clears throat> a doggone near perfect example. Your price on this one, 165, my friends, 165 like it is, 185 with an Apostle P edge that's in your inventory as Spyderco Pair 2 BRN S35. Next up, uh oh, this is kind of all the Pair 2 anybody could ever want. There's your box. There's your label. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I have a hint for you. Hmm. This one comes with the Blade HQ Knife Life <clears throat> key ring tag. Oh, oh, my friends. Oh, 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 oh. We're in a custom black and white lanyard. We have a natural or jade or ghost G10 handle with black PVD coated clip, DLC coated blade, black hardware, and uh oh, I see something shiny. Oh, it's got an Apostle P edge. Oh, <clears throat> nice action. Blade centering down the middle. Lock up, rock solid. Oh my. I'd call it like new in the box, but it's got that better than factory edge on the M4. Whew, wow. This is in your inventory as Spyderco Para 2 Jade DLC M4 TAP. It's ready to rock. Your price $235. 235 oh, Save me from myself, boys. Save me from myself. Next up, here's an interesting little knife from Spider Co. by way of Wisconsin. Special factory order or dealer exclusive, I should say, by DLT Trading. Hey, Jason, I was going. We have a Para 3 FRN red and M390, the DLT colors, so to speak. A beautiful crimson red handle. Deep carry paper clip clip. M390 blade. This one completely factory fresh, like new in the box. Rock solid lockup. It needs a little. It needs a little flicking to be totally free, but it's pretty close. Centering dead down the middle. Rock solid lockup. A perfect example of a DLT dealer exclusive pair of three. <clears throat> These are sold out and they're kind of going crazy. eBay sold listings run between 170 and 221. We'll just put this perfect like new in box example right at the bottom of that range. It can be yours for 170 and then 195 if you like it with an Apostle P Edge. That's in your inventory as Spider Coat Pair 3 LW for lightweight. Red M390. Mm -hmm. Next up, <clears throat> another Spyderco box, another Para 3. We had one of these a few weeks ago. Man, it did not last long. This is that Cutlery Shop exclusive, not Bento box, Cutlery Shop. Para 3 with the orange and blue G10 and the blade of CPM Rex 45 with a factory fresh edge. They did a nice job too. Uh -huh. Let's see. Lock up. Rock solid. Action. Free swinging. Blade centering. Dead down the middle, I think. Yes. They're out of stock. What are they paying for these out of stock Sprint Run dealer exclusive, you might ask? Well, Sold listings on eBay running between 214 and 245 by my research yesterday. This one can be yours. 
like new in box, 200 bucks, two and a quarter if you like it with an Apostle Piaz. That's in your inventory as Spiderco Para 3 BLU slash OR Rex 45. Next up, we're sticking with Spiderco. We're staying in Colorado, but now we have a Manix 2, and I see M4. PBK. Uh oh. Oh, must be a Blade HQ exclusive. Look at the Jade G10 with the ghost rings from the black hardware. The black and white custom paracord lanyard. The PVD coated clip. Oh, I misflicked. There we go. The action on the knife is better than my right thumb. DLC coated blade in CPM M4 with an Apostle P edge. Oh my. I almost cut myself on this knife when I was setting up for the sale. Lockup's rock solid. Action's perfect. Centering is. as well. Mm -mm 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 -mm. We're calling it near mint in box only because. It has a much nicer than factory edge. Your price on this one with an Apostle P edge, 220, 220 on the Spyderco Manix 2 Jade DLC M4 TAP. Next up, man, we have a little theme going tonight. Another Spyderco from Golden. This one, a Yojimbo. Two, I see M4 in that model number as well. The clip not installed is the factory Spyderco hourglass because what is installed is a DLC coated titanium deep carry affair. This has the Jade G10 satin blade bright hardware black and white lanyard. And blade steel is of course CPM. M4 or dealer exclusive from Blade HQ. Rock solid lockup. Free swing in action. Uh, the lanyard does meet the cutting edge, just so you know. The lanyard probably won't be there long. Centering is perfect. Action lockup as well. This one, like new in the box, except the clip has been added in the lanyard. Blade HQ exclusive, out of stock. Your price. 225, 225 like it is, 250 with an Apostle P Edge that's in your inventory as Spyderco Yojimbo 2 Jade M4. Next up, another Spidey, this one from the Taichung Manufacturing Facility. Inside the box we have a an Ikuchi CF. So the Akuchi, an interesting little low-profile semi-front flipper with that new style, more textured carbon fiber over G10 laminate. You got your reversible tip-up deep carry paper clip clip. Now, I need a little wrist for this one. I don't find the action to be super great. It's a compression lock on phosphor bronze. There we go. <clears throat> it's a little gummy frankly. It is a like-new inbox knife. The Akuchi sports a three and a quarter inch blade of CPM S30V steel, a little bit of a trailing point thing. Nice little sticker. Handle length is four and five sixteenths. Lockup is, is solid. Centering is right down the middle. Action, you saw. <clears throat> Could be better. Might break in. Uh, these are in stock currently at your favorite web retailer for $140, Spyderco map pricing. This one can be yours, like new in the box, shipped by Priority Mail for $110, 110 like it is. $135 with an Apostle P Edge, that is the Spyderco Ikuchi. Next up, it's another Spyderco, this one in the diminutive box. This is also the Taichung plant. It is the Rhino CF plane. I don't think they make a spider edge version. But anyway, 
you have that same beautiful sort of peel ply textured carbon fiber over G10. Traditional Spyderco clip, reversible, tip up left or right. It is a compression lock knife. And what a sweet little sweepy clip point affair we have. The blade steel on this one is going to be CTS XHP. And let's see. Two and three eighths is your blade length, and then you got a three and five eighths handle with that compression lock mechanism. And this little short light blade doesn't like to flick close very well. Flicks open just fine. I keep looking for a liner lock on that handle, and there's not one there. So blade centering is down the middle, and lockup is rock solid. <clears throat> Condition on the Rhino, which I think is a funny name for such a small, such a small knife. Condition is like new in box. These are in stock new at your favorite web retailer for $140. This one can be yours, however, for $115. $115. And then $135 if you'd like it with an Apostle P Edge. That is the Spyderco Rhino. Next up. Oh, guys, we have a cool one. We sure do. From the Benchmade Knife Company, Oregon City, Oregon, we have a 484-1601 Nakamura Access. This would be a dealer exclusive for Knife Center. How do we know that? Because it's running the stabilized wood handle scales, which are probably a lot like Packa wood. I think they're a little prettier than the pack of wood knife center does for the spideys very nice lanyard ties in well with the pivot collars and the orange standoffs this one is wearing a deep carry bronze anodized titanium clip no original clip with this one but you guys know you can get a clip from benchmade for nothing or next to nothing blade steel on this one's going to be bowler m390 and it's wearing an edge by the Apostle P knife service. Pretty doggone sharp, too. <clears throat> Action is free dropping. Lockup is solid. Blade centering on the Nakamura. I'm saying close, but not quite perfect. So it would be a like new in box knife were it not for that much better than factory edge and the accoutrement that you see here. So we'll call it near mint in box. These are discontinued and out of stock. Uh, web listings, or actually not web listings, but sold listings on eBay. Ranged between, get this, 165 and that knife was a turd, up to 350 bucks. And lots of them were in the upper twos, mid to upper twos. This one can be yours. For 225, guys. 225, no need to sharpen. It's in your inventory as Benchmade 484 1601 Nakamura TAP. Next up, it's another one from uh, Benchmade. This is, oh, it's just one of my favorites. The 535 GRY 1 Bug Out. I own this knife, although it's not wearing its original scales, but I own it, I carry it, I use the heck out of it. Yeah, there is that that faint green, tannish green set of FRN handle scales. That beautiful, what is that, zirconium I don't know. I think it, they call it chromium oxide, or is it, I think chromium oxide they call it. Coated shorty deep carry pocket clip, which is a work of art. I almost like it better than the split arrow. No, no. Get a little custom tied lanyard. Got that same coating on the blade. That sort of deep gray. S30V blade steel. And a Apostle P edge. How, and it's still pretty virginal. Very nice, very sharp. Rock solid lockup. Nice free action. And the blade centering on this particular bug out is uh, pretty perfect, actually. Might be a little off, but gee, pretty perfect. So I'd call it like new in box, but it's wearing a lanyard and it has my edge on it. 
So we'll call it near mint, maybe better than new. Uh, current map pricing at your favorite web retailer for this version of the bug out is 144 bucks. This one can be yours with lanyard and an Apostle P Edge, near mint, better than new, inbox, 120, 120, no need to sharpen. Next up, ooh, have you been looking for a Spenza 25 and didn't want to pay ridiculous money? Well, we got it for you. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. We have a Sabenza 25, full-size variety. I'm not sure they made a small 25. I think they jumped right to Incosi. This one was born December 8th, 2014. I remember sharpening this knife, I think when it was new or very close to new. So this has been a user, guys. So a little bit of carry wear, but not much. The trails are pretty light. There's one nice little smile on the pocket clip. Got a custom lanyard. <clears throat> has sort of that coarse-ish like fresh media blasted texture on the handle there's your lock engagement pretty normal for the ceramic ball lock blade centering right down the middle action does not suck not quite a free dropper eh, it might be if I actually get the lock bar off the blade double lugs still pretty blue um, now, I sharpened this, but it's got use on it, and it's, uh, there are some micro chips in the cutting edge, and it would do well to be resharpened, I think. So, I'm going to offer a sharpening price on this one. Um, let's see. We'll call this excellent to near mint. Your price is going to be 350 350 then 375 if you'd like it with an Apostle P edge, and I... I, I added 25 instead of 20 because it really does need to be disassembled and degunked. So 350 like it is, 375 with sharpen and spot. That's the Chris Reeve Sabenza 25. Next up, you guys kind of like these little knives. I know you do. From a Hinder Knives made in the USA, we have a, an XM Slippy Slicer. Stone wash blade OD green G10. Now the original hinderer clip is in the baggie because this is wearing a deep carry bronze anodized affair, also in titanium. The yellow and white lanyard. Maybe I'll just buy this and give it to Heidi, Miss Yellow. Anyway, there are your G10 scales. There is your slip joint slicer. Oh, by the way. Wearing an Apostle P Edge, is it? It sure is. It's got a little use on it, but I don't think it's time to resharpen. Blade steel is 20 CV. Now this is a cam tang knife. I'm calling the pull a 7. The walk and talk <clears throat> is hinderer. So it's like better than bench made proper, not as good as GEC, if that makes any sense. Blade centering is perfect. Condition is going to be near mint in box with lanyard clip and my edge. Your price on this one? $235. $235. No need to sharpen. That's the Hinderer XM Slippy Slicer. Next up, I haven't seen one of these in a while, and I think this is sort of a new generation knife. So, this is by Mick Strider Knives. It's the MSK 07A, which is a tiger striped SMF in 20 CV. If I can peel the sticker, that was nice of my consigner to put that right over the sticker. Anyway, aluminum scale with flame TI frame. Are you kidding me? Look at that. Look at that. That appears to be either hard anodized or DLC coated milled aluminum. Nice red lanyard. There's your flamed titanium frame. 
This is wearing a, a lock bar stabilizer that says 9mm Luger. Mm -hmm. And then you have this. Oh my. Tiger sti Stripe 20 CV. Just beautifully done, by the way. Rock solid lockup. A little bit of uh, strider stick, which not bothersome at all. Centering is dead. Action is yummy. Um, I'm not sure if that is a custom stabilizer or if Mick built it like that. So I'm going to call it near mint to like new in baggy. Good luck finding one, guys. Uh, you found one here, though. Your price, 475 475 like it is. 500 with my edge. That's the Strider MSK 078 SMF. Next up, <clears throat> we have one from Andre de Villiers. And it's going to come in this horizontal carry leather sheath. Uh -huh. Inside, we have an ADV Impy with a beautiful paracord lanyard and a bronze bead. Stainless steel construction, Coca Bolo covers, bar shield, got a little bit of scratching in the satin, but nothing horrible. Inside the handle resides a beautiful spear point, an S35VN, wearing a beautiful polished edge from the Apostle P. Knife Service. Still pretty virginal. I think the blade steel is S35VN. If you guys if you guys know something different, weigh in in the comments. But something like that anyway. Pull weight's about seven and a half. Beautiful cam tang action. Superb walk and talk. We'll call this near mint in pouch. Uh, these are out of stock. When they were in stock, they ran 290 web pricing um lamnia has them actually lamnia the european knife website at 415 us dollars this one can be yours for 250 250 that's in your inventory is andre de villiers empty tap next up it's time for the traditional slip joint pocket knife segment of tonight's, uh, tonight's sale. First up, look at that tube label. From the Northfield Unexcelled Premium Pocket Knives line from Great Eastern Cutlery, we have the 06 Crusader Templar with acrylic covers, the Knights Templar bolsters and end caps, Look at that red acrylic. Nice, nice walk and talk on this knife, guys. A six and a half to seven. Super snappy. Two and three quarters inches of closed length on that sort of little Coke bottle 06 platform. What a sweetie. Uh, centering is close to perfect on this one, but a little to the right, I think, as you're looking at it. We're going to call this near mint in tube. Your price, 85 bucks. 85 like it is, 100 with an Apostle P edge. That's in your inventory. is GEC Northfield number 06 Crusader. Next up. Oh, man, I hope somebody got some Christmas money. I sure do. Why? Well, because of this. From the handcrafted Titty Cutlery Classic Pocket Knives line from GEC, we have a model number 153216CL in charred barrel oak, serialized number 071. We got wax paper. We have a little story. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's the Charred Barrel Oak Beer Scout, my friends, number 71 of 225, with a Christine Tucker signature. That is a collector's item in and of itself. Would you like to see the knife? I'll bet you would. I'll bet you would. 
But first, I'm going to show you this little BS medallion. Mm -hmm. And then there's the knife. Oh. Look at that charred barrel oak, would ya? Oh my, oh my. Nickel, silver, and brass on this one. You got the bale. Got your sheep's foot deer scout blade. Got your cap lifter. Uh huh. Let's see. Pull weight six and a half. Perfect walk and talk. Tools are perfectly centered. Like new in tube. Like new in tube. Probably the most collectible beer scout ever. Completed sold listings on eBay range between 338 and 463. Your price on this one? Get ready. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. 295. 310 with an Apostle P. Edge. That's in your inventory is GEC Titty Ute, number 15, Beer Scout. Next up. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, that's not your normal GEC tube. Uh huh. It is a handcrafted titty piece of cutlery. It is a number four six two two one eight. That is a number forty six whaler in desert freaking ironwood. Got to flip my page here. Oh golly! This is the big mama jama. The, uh, the Swell Center Elephant Toe. Yeah, I think they're like four and three-eighths inches closed. Look at that desert ironwood. Look at that satin finished brass hardware. The huge gimp shield. And then you have this. A solid eight and a half on the cam time. Maybe a nine pull. This is not... A girly man's knife. And then you got the pen blade. Oh. Yeah, I think I better open the big blade before I try to close that. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. That's what I'm talking about. No rub on those blades, by the way. Condition like new in the tube. I only found one of these on an eBay completed listing. It was a best offer accepted at 325 and I don't know if it came with all of its goodies like this one does, but this one can be yours. 260, 260, and 285 if you want me to sharpen both those blades. That's in your inventory as GEC Titty number 46 Whaler. Next up, one of my favorite GECs of the last few years. This one from the Northfield Unexcelled line of premium pocket knives. The model number 933119er in Coca Bolo. This is a 93 ram foot. And look at the cocoa on this one. The Cloud Shield. The double line nickel silver bolsters. The beautiful. I mean beautiful ram foot blade, long pull cut swedge. Now this one's got a solid seven and a half, maybe an eight pull. Perfect walk and talk. Centering right down the middle. For those of you who don't like wussy pulls, this would be a good choice. <laughs> like new in the tube. Can't find one new, but on eBay they're selling. They are selling. Found several of them. They ranged uh, sold listings between 173 and 245. This one, like new in tube, and a beautiful example can be yours for 180 bucks, like it is 180, 195 with an Apostle P edge. This is in your inventory as GEC number 93 Ram Foot. GEC Northfield number 93 Ram Foot. Next up. We have one from the now extinct, maybe resurrected, Queen Colliery Company. 
This is going to be a Tool Steel Pocket Knives line product. Designed by the great Joe Pardue. This is the Queen Joe Pardue RV-1W Hawkbill. Check that thing out, would ya? One of 300. The closed length is four and an eighth, so the handler of the blade's probably, what, close to three and a half ish. In beautiful polished detail. A decent factory edge. Gorgeous stag covers on this one with the round queen shield. There's an idea of your match. Pretty good. Here's what I like. Superb walk and talk. Blade centering almost dead right down the middle. No side play. Man, what are you going to do? How are you going to beat that for an old queen? Uh, I'm going to call that pull a seven. Closed length is four and an eighth, as I said. Uh, I found, I think, one of these on eBay that had actually sold. And it was a completed sold listing at 195 This one can be yours for a buck 40. 140 bucks like it is, 160 with my edge on it. That's in your inventory is the Queen Joe Pardue RV-1W Hawkbill. Next up, man, I like this knife. I sure do. This is from Smith & Sons Knife Company. We have in the box a mud bug, which is on the GC Large Sodbuster frame. And this one is in... Dark natural linen micarta. I hope the camera is doing that justice. Because that is a beautiful honey colored natural linen. Just beautiful. Now the cool thing about the Smith & Sons GEC made sod buster is that it's a lockback. And it's kind of a stout lockback. It takes a little effort to disengage that lock. Which I kind of like in a hard working knife. Blade steel is 1095. The closed length is 4 and 9 sixteenths. So almost a 4 inch blade on this one. 1095 steel, if I didn't mention it. They did a nice job sharpening that one, too. Uh, zero play. Perfect centering. All steel construction except the brass lanyard tube. Condition on this one is like new in the box. I couldn't find these in stock anywhere, but I did find eBay sold listings between 142 and 160. This is like new in the box, perfect example. I'm saying, your price 130, 130, and then 150 if you like it with an Apostle P edge. That's the Smith and Sons Mud Bug. Next up, uh oh, guys, it's time for some slip joints in. Plastic baggies. Mm -hmm. From the Northwoods Knife Company, we have a Delta Jack in red linen micarta with coin. This one's going to come in the moccasin slip. And here's the knife. I believe these are built on the number 35, sort of medium cigar GEC platform. All steel in construction. Red linen micarta, the Northwoods shield also in steel and then you're going to have a long pole rustic flat worn cliff blade super snappy so cool centering on this one is what did I say pretty perfect I'm saying so condition is going to be like new and baggy with coin Uh, let's see. eBay sold listings for uh, in similar covers between 220 and 350 for the Delta Jack. I think we'll price this one because it's extremely nice, absolutely like new and baggy. 250, 250, and 265 if you'd like my edge on it. That is the Northwoods Delta Jack. Next up, uh oh. It's another one from Northwoods, and I forgot to take the sticker off. Mm 
Mm -hmm. This is the Bear Lake in Curacao Burlap with coin. Comes in a nice little waxed slip. Lots of wax. So the Bear Lake, a long skinny sleeve board, and look at that Curacao Burlap, all steel construction, satin finished. And you got a Warncliffe blade with the nice swedge, the long pole, the deeply stamped Northwoods Maker's Mark, rustic flats. Nice action. Six and a half pole, perfect walk and talk, perfect centering. By the way, this knife's three and nine sixteenths close, so it's skinny, but it's kind of long too. Pretty cool. Like new in baggy with coin. These are rare, and man, have the prices gone up. I found one, one sold listing on eBay, and it was at three fifty in this cover material. Your price on this one two ninety five, and then three ten with an Apostle P edge. That's the Northwoods Bear Lake. Next up, hmm, I got sloppy. I left these little blue number stickers on everything. Okay, from Northwoods, we have a Lincoln Jack Giraffe Bone number 69. Stop snickering. Okay, comes in the big old Main Street slip, which is kind of a large slip for kind of a diminutive knife. Oh my! Oh my! All steel, polished, gorgeous giraffe bone. This is made on the GEC 15 boys knife frame. You get that beautiful clip point. But look, look how it kind of changes the shape of that clip when you do the rustic flats and the long pull. And the drawn swedge, very cool, very cool. Let's see. Seven, maybe seven and a half. Super snap. Centering on the Lincoln is perfect. It is like new inbox with coin. <sighs> wow. Now, I couldn't find any completed listings on eBay with giraffe bone covers. But I found similar kind of premium covers that weren't ivory. And those knives sold for between $365 and $400. Think people like this one? Your price on this one, guys, and I think it's a bargain. Hard, hard for me to spit this out, but I think it's a bargain at $350. And it can be yours for that price. $365 with an Apostle P. Edge. That's the Northwoods Lincoln Jack. Next up the last northwoods knife in tonight's sale is the hawthorne jack warncliffe in red linen with coin this one also comes in the main street slip this is built on the great eastern cutlery number 48 slimline trapper frame which is one of my favorite knife handles ever all steel construction red linen micarta and then you get that beautiful thing. 1095 Warncliffe. And this one happens to be wearing an Apostle P Edge. And I don't think he's ever cut anything with it. Six and a half, seven pull. Beautiful walk and talk. Centering down the middle. My Edge. Near mint in pouch. Only because I think there might be just a little carry wear on the shield. Maybe on the bolsters. And it's been sharpened. Um... So we'll call it Near Mint and Baggy with Coin. Completed listings on eBay. This is nuts because they were not doing this a few months ago. Completed sold listings on eBay with red linen between $340 and $430. Are you kidding me? This one can be yours at a bargain price of $295. No need to sharpen. That's the Northwoods Hawthorne Jack with the TAP Edge. Okay, next up, i got to reach for this one. This is kind of hard for me to do. I told you in my Heads Up video that I was going to sell a couple 
personal collection watches. The first one, this is my lone surviving vintage watch. And I hope the camera will do this justice. This is a 1959, so date code L9, Bulova diamond dial dress watch. Now the case is very slim. I didn't measure, but it's, what is that, eight or nine millimeters thick. There are some little dings on the case back, and it's it's been polished, so it's kind of hard to see the engraving, but it'll say 10 karat gold filled, and then up here it'll say L9, and, I, and this is interesting, guys. Let me get the hands out of the way. Built in 1959, above the sub-seconds, they're saying waterproof, and then look at that. A 23 joule movement in 1959, and then look at the dial. It's kind of a modified pie pan, I guess you could say. So the outer ring of the dial where the markers are is flat and it well flat in texture but it kind of domes down the three indices at 12 3 and 9 are white gold with small diamonds then you have an arabic six and i believe the the other markers and the hands are in a rhodium plated steel 34 millimeters is your case diameter this watch runs well i wound it up yesterday morning Checked it today. It's about running about 30 seconds per day fast. This is a Tehu Lizard strap. Genuine Tehu Lizard. Made in the USA, I believe. Yes, it is. Um, I've probably worn it three times on this strap. Pretty cool old watch, I think. So if you're into the vintage stuff... I'm also going to include, if you wanted to be dress up like James Bond and go to the casino, uh -huh. how about that? Would he have done that in the early 60s? I think he would have. And then I've also got a little tan military, not a NATO strap, but with a buckle, all 18 millimeter stuff that will complement the watch nicely if you want to change it up a little bit. Um, I have no idea what's this, what this is worth. I probably bought it 15 years ago. And I think it's probably worth a little more than I paid for it then. But let's see. It can be yours with all three straps. Um, <clears throat> $125 bucks shipped priority mail. I don't think that's a bad deal if you're looking for one, one like that. And then the last item in the sale. This kind of hurts, but I just don't wear it anymore. I think it was my first watch review. This is my, like, seven-year-old... Casio Duro, right? And man, it's got some war wounds on it. There's a scratch in the crystal. There's a couple scratches in the bezel. There's some scratches in the case. It is wearing a fairly new silicone elite strap from Barton. Keeps excellent time. I mean excellent time. I think they're 43 or 44 millimeters in diameter. 120 click bezel. Whoops, I overshot. Nice bezel action. Uh -huh. Lines up nicely. So yeah, it's old, guys. It's been worn. And I'm not going to guarantee this because I don't remember for sure, but I'm pretty sure when that battery goes bad, I think I paid for lifetime batteries plus batteries, so there's probably a sticker under the case back. I'm thinking, if it's not, it's not. But I think I did that to this watch. Anyway, you can buy these for like 50 bucks. Um, and the original strap went by by long ago. You can buy them like 50 bucks brand new or just buy this one shipped to you. Priority mail for $28. $28. So, you know, if, if you've been telling time on your phone and you're thinking, maybe I'd like to wear a wristwatch, here's a great little watch, great big watch for like no money, that, that you'll get respect from watch guys if you're wearing. And yeah, it costs you 28 bucks to find out if you're a wristwatch guy. So that's it, the Casio Duro. Okay, And that, my friends, brings us to the end of another weekly 
knife and watch sale on the Apostle P channel. Thanks for hanging out with me. Happy New Year. May 2021 be a blessed year for you and your family. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the word is sharp. Now commence to clicking.